a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy but I guarantee mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy but I guarantee receive it Lord and Lord just just keep us covered from the coronavirus and Jesus now I pray amen, amen.
This portion of today's service is where you can participate remotely. It's now time for tithes and offering. Here at Mount Calm during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have several ways for you to donate. You can donate electronically via Cash App by entering our Cash App tag to dollar sign Mount Calm Church. You can send your offering via mail to P.O. Box 376 Coldwater, Mississippi 38618 or in person Sundays at Mount Calm Church from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you're una unable to do one of the following listed or feel unsafe leaving the comfort of your home, please reach out to us and a brother of our deacon board will contact you. I got a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy, but I guarantee to you that he's going to bring something in your life that he can get your attention. By his father in the name of Jesus again, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. Continue to strengthen us as we take life's daily journey, Father God. We understand that uh, we're faced with many different trials and tribulations, Father God, but we understand that you will be there with us until the end of the earth. So continue to strengthen us, Father God. Father God, now that I hide myself behind the sacred desk so others be able to hear and see what you have for them today, Father God, let your word be able to touch the heart of those that need it most, Father God. And Father God, let it be able to encourage someone, not discourage anyone. Uh, let the word penetrate to those that need it most. Father, these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Psalm. Psalm. Well, us country folks may put an S on the end, and we call it Psalms. Amen. Psalm 37. 37th number of Psalms. Psalm 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. The same thing is in my book or my, my iPad. The same thing you have in your book if you hadn't torn it out. Psalm 37, verse 25 says, I've been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Just for a few minutes, I want to tell everybody to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Y'all know that preaching and amen, it goes together. What God has joined, let no man put us under. Keep the faith. Now, I understand that it's kind of hard to keep the faith with everything that's going on around us. You got the coronavirus, clinically known as COVID-19. Uh, it has forced the world to embrace a new normal. Everyday life in our country is at its knees. As we look around, sports are not being played. Games were canceled and postpone. Schools don't know what they're going to do when school starts in about two weeks. Right. Wall Street has taken a hit. Social distancing and canceling of worship service has made some people irritable. The COVID-19 numbers are still on an uprise. Just last week in Tennessee, uh, total, there's about 75,000 confirmed cases, not including the ones that don't want to go get tested, and over 800 deaths. In Mississippi, there are over 42,000 cases and almost 1,400 deaths. The numbers are still growing everywhere. Now, the stimulus check, somebody said the stimulus check will be able to fix the problems, but that won't fix the problem. Political 
Referendums and medical expertise won't solve the dilemma. Quarantining of population all over the world would not get the problem solved. You want to know what get the problem solved? I'm glad you asked. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14. It gives us the remedy that we need. It says, for I, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. It says in verse 14, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal the land. Uh, Psalms 11, verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let me show you in the Bible, because... Our government leaders don't understand what we need to do in times like this. So let me show you in the Bible what we need to do in times like this. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6 says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law do he, dip, he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. And his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalms, 30, Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6, it tells us in Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6, it tells us that the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want he making me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul he leadeth me in the right the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death but I will fear no evil because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and verse 6 says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That, I understand that that may not mean too much to some people, but I kept on reading. If we go to Psalms chapter 24, it says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So we belong to the Lord for he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in this holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who that not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfulness. If we keep on reading Psalms chapter 27, verses 1 through 5, it tells us, Unto thee, Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let mine enemies triumph over me. Yet let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cease. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, O Lord. Look, look, look at Psalms verses. Psalm chapter 27, Psalm chapter 27, it tells us the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? For the Lord is my strength of my life and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Thou and hosts should encamp around or against me. In other words, that coronavirus has encamped against me. My heart shall not fear. Thy war shall rise against thee. In this will I have confidence. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his 
pavilion. I'm so glad that in the time of all the troubles I'm having, God said that he will hide me in the time of trouble. Wait, wait. The Lord, the Lord will give you strength for your heart. Look at Psalms, verse 90. Psalms, Psalms chapter 90, verse 1 says, The Lord has been thy dwelling place in all generations. Verse 2, and I'm paraphrasing, it says, Before the mountains was even established, he's been our dwelling place. Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most, y'all know it, of the most high, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Psalms, Psalms 37 says, I've been young and now I'm old. I've seen a whole lot of things. Y'all may not can tell that I'm old, but I've seen a whole lot of things. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. The scripture does not say, I want to help a few people out. The scripture does not say that I've never seen the righteous sick. The Bible does not say, I've never seen the righteous suffer. The scripture does not teach that I've never seen the righteous get in trouble. The Bible does not declare that I've never seen the righteous die. The Bible doesn't say I've never seen the righteous lose their mind. The Bible doesn't say I've never seen the righteous, the righteous lose their house. The scripture does not say I've never seen the righteous get depressed. The Bible does not say I've never seen the righteous go to the hospital. The scripture does not say I've never seen the righteous lose a loved one. The Bible does not say I've seen the righteous get broke. The Bible teaches I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Because when we get sick, he won't forsake you. When we get broke, we still got a roof over our heads. When we don't have money, we still able to have food in our mouth. When we lose a loved one, he'll still wipe tears from your eyes. When we, when we, when we are without, he still will make away. I've been through too much and I'm still here. Scripture says I've been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Uh, just want to encourage all the brothers and sisters that are listening to us today. I know what the president and the medical science is saying all over the country. They say, wash your hands. And uh, maybe we need to take this time out to realize that a lot of us are not clean in what we do. Notice how we should be able to look at our sins and the things that we do. And notice that this coronavirus is allowing us to wash our hands. We should take heed of that and start washing some of our sins instead of our Hands. What are you saying? But what good is it to have clean hands if you got a dirty heart or a dirty mind? You can go to hell with sanitizer on your hands. With sanitizer, we need to sanitize your heart, Mr. President. We need to sanitize our soul, Mr. Government. Sanitize the spirit of our church. Uh, we've been through too much just to wash our hands. Uh, God brought us through, so through slavery. God brought us through the back door. God brought us through color drinking fountains and water hoses. If God keep us in, keep us in Jim Crow segregation, 
I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is still on him. If God can keep us through all the stuff that we've already been through, I've never seen the righteous forsaken and I've never seen the seed begging bread. So if he had brought you safe this far, I know that he can bring you a little bit further. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. Now, listen, I noticed some time back, back when, I know we went through all these different things that we used to do, what we came out of. These color drinking fountains and water hoses. Yeah, I drunk out of water hoses. Y'all say I, I'm too young to drink out of water hoses, but we drunk out of the, the water hoses. Uh, I used to pick peas and, and butter beans and, and all of that. Y'all may say I ain't took all that, I ain't took all that, but I, I picked those. And uh, I remember the time when, when we was young people, young boys, and we had to, we didn't have money, so we weren't able to buy those basketball goals that everybody else have in their yards. So we would get up one of those old milk crates, and we cut the bottom out of it, put the nail on the tree, and we'll be able to shoot ball in the backyard on some dirt. And then after a while, we graduated from that. Uh -huh. Then we take an old bike rim, uh -huh. take the spokes out of it, right. put nails on it on the tree, right. and then we'll shoot basketball in a bike rim. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, is those are the things that we used to do that God has brought us from. If, if he can bring us through those times, he will still... Make a wait. What else have he done for you? Uh, again, I told you we ain't never have, always had money. We would take an old tire that came off a tire that was flat. We'll get in it and roll down the hill on a tire. And when we got tired of doing that, we put a rope on it and hang it from a tree and start swinging on it. And when we got tired of doing that, granddaddy would take the tire and put it in the front yard and put some dirt and some flowers in it. We may do with what we had. God brought us from a mighty long way. Let me tell you one more thing and I'm going to move. Y'all remember we didn't have cell phones. I know I didn't have one. They went out when we was young. We used to take the old tomato cans, put strings on them, and act like we was calling each other. The, those were the days. If we can survive those days, I know we'll be able to survive these days. What are you saying? We've been through too much. All I'm saying is God made ways out of no way. God brought us a mighty long way. He's been just that good because we know or we know what to do with broken pieces. I don't feel no waste time. Come too far. From where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And, uh, and everybody listening, I, I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Let, let me give you a few things and I'm done. Let me give you a few things here. Y'all give me a few more minutes and we're done. Listen, what does David mean? When he says, I was young, and now I'm old. What, what is the distance between young and old? What's the time frame between young and old? What is the age that tells you that you are now old? Some say it's 30 and 40 and 50, you over the hill. So if you over the hill at 50, that means you are guaranteeing yourself that you're going to live to see what? 100. So what is the distance or time frame between young and old? Well, I come to tell you, it's not years because some folk have years and still act up. So it doesn't mean years. What David is saying, I was young and I'm old. He was saying that I've had, I've gotten experience. I've seen God do some stuff. I've seen God put people in my life to help me. I've seen God make my enemies my footstools. I've seen God show up in my life because 
when the bottom fell out, I still was able to go to sleep at night. First of all, and I'm done. I'm telling you, just give me the two little things here, and I'm done. Listen, first of all, if you're going to keep the faith, and if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to trust in the Lord, and if you want to be on the Lord's team, let me give you two things, and I'm, I'm going to sit down and listen re- very quickly here. Uh, the first thing I want you all to see is, is that you have to have control or you have to control your walk. You have to control your walk. I didn't make it up. If you look at verse 23, verse 23 of Psalms 20, if you look at verse 23 and Psalm 37, verse 23, it tells you that the footsteps or the steps of a good man I ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered. They are planned by the Lord, already constructed by the Lord. God ain't got to let you step, or he's not going to let you step into something that you can't help. Just put your trust in him. And he will delight your way. Second thing here, and I'm I'm done. Listen, your failure is not your destination. Your failure is not your final destination. What, What are you trying to say? Look at verse 24. I didn't make it up. It says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord up holding him with his hand. So in other words, whenever you fall in life, just know that if you have God on your side, you don't have to worry about folks stepping on you while you're already down. God said that he'll reach way down and he'll pick you up with his hand. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that every time I stumble and every time I fall, God said he's going to pick me up with his hand. Listen, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to get done. Y'all remember the story of Joshua? Joshua was, was supposed to go to one place. He went to another place. And he went over in the boat, and he went to sleep. But notice when Joshua, when the fish took Joshua way down, Fish took him down to the bottom of the sea. And then he got way, way, way down to the bottom of the sea. He was in the body, he was in the belly of a fish. Some say whale, some say shark, but he was in the belly of a fish. And the fish took him way, way, way down. But it says on the third day he was able to get spit up by the fish on dry land what you trying to say is when we try to do things that the Lord does not want us to do well it would take us way down in life and some of us have too many scars and some of us have too many failures that them took us way 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 down well i want to tell somebody this morning it doesn't matter how low you get god will still be able to reach way down and pick you up with his hand is there anybody glad that God can reach way down when you're way down God can still pick you up is there anybody here glad that he will reach way down and still pick you up is there anybody here know that God will He'll make a way if you know that he will. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Show he will. And if 
Anybody know he will? Anybody know he will? Come on and put your hand together if you know he will. Anybody ever been down? Anybody ever been broke? Anybody ever been sick? Won't the Lord? Won't the Lord? Won't he pick you up? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he place your feet on solid ground? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Hey! Yeah! Yes, sir! I know he's a He been good. He been good to me. He been good to me. Anybody know he been good? Anybody know he been good? I really need to find somebody that the Lord done brought them out of a hole, them brought them from danger, them brought them from darkness into the marvelous light. Can I find somebody? Know that God has been good. If you know the Lord been good, shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah. And, yeah. Anybody here know that the Lord showed up been good? Why don't you grab a neighbor and say neighbor? He made a way. Said neighbor. He made a way. Said neighbor. He so made a way. He so made a way. Ah, yes, he did. Uh, yeah. Anybody know you know? Anybody know he's all right? Anybody know he's all right? I tried him, and I know he's all right. I'm trying to quit here, y'all. I tried him, and I know he's all right. I tried him, and I know he's all right. I tried him, I tried him. you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done for us. 
continue to strengthen us, Father. Continue to be with us. Father, we understand that this is a dying world. We thank you that you'll be with us all the way. Father God, we realize that we may not have all the things that we need in life, but as long as we got King Jesus, it's all that we need. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. We thank you for being there with us. We thank you for continuing to put your love and arms around us, Father God, day in and day out. Father God, we understand that we are faced with many different trials and tribulations that want to take us out of this world. But we thank you for being right there by our side, Father God. When we can't turn to the left and find to the right and can't find nobody to go down on our knees with us, Father God, you're there with us, Father. In the middle of the night, Father God, you're there with we drive up and down the dangerous hallways, Father God. You're there when we go into the workhouse, Father God. You're there when we go inside the grocery stores, Father God. You're there when we seem like we can't be closed in our right mind, Father God. Where every time we turn around, Father, we realize that you are there. So we thank you again, Father. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. This is thy servant's prayer. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much for watching our service this morning. We pray that something was done or said to be able to encourage you along life, Christian's journey. Again, tune in next Sunday at 10 a.m. Thank you all so much. God bless.